So in this video where I talk about burpees being an absolutely horrendous exercise, um, one of the first things that I want to say is if you're commenting on this video, um, that this is not a person attacking anyone that does burpees, this is not a person attacking any gyms that really promote burpees and use them as a, as a training tool. Um, we're allowed to disagree, um, so please ask you first of all to be respectful. This is not a person attack on anyone in particular um, or any gym, okay? So, um, one of the first things I want to talk about is the history of the burpee. And um, just to give this video a little bit of context, um, they were invented in the 1940s, okay, by a guy, I have it written down, by a guy called Royal Huddleston Burpee. That's his actual name. Um, and he was using the burpee doing four reps as part of a fitness test as part of his thesis um, to measure the general fitness of, um, of the participants. Um, then um, the military adopted it as part of their fitness test, um, their intake test for the military in 1942 and they had to do it for 20 seconds. However, by 1946, the military had already increased the duration of the burpee test to 60 seconds. Now, Royal Huddleston, right, um, genuine, his real name, look it up, um, he even wrote that he disapproved um, of the time increase and warned that it was only suitable for people that were already in good cardiovascular health and that it may be bad for your back, for your knees, um, especially for those who have um, poor core strength to begin with. Um, so there's just a little bit of a background on the burpee. So it was generally started off um, being used for only four reps as part of a fitness test. Then it was adopted by the military who used it as a 20 second fitness test, who then four years later in 1946 they increased it to 60 seconds, which annoyed um, Royal Huddleston um, because he had specifically said that the burpee was not designed, I suppose, for people who may have poor cardiovascular health or who may um, injure their knees or their, um, say for their knees or their back uh, due to poor core strength. Um, so there you have it, there's a little bit of a background on the video. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to go through this step by step just to tell you exactly why I believe that burpees are just a, a terrible, terrible exercise for, for most people. Um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to sh do a couple of repetitions, um, just three or four. Um, four because Roy Huddleston said I can't do any more than that. Um, so let me do a couple of reps first just to show you. Okay, so for all the burpee aficionados, um, you might think they were good, you might think they were absolutely terrible. Um, that's not the point, I just wanted to do a couple of reps for anyone that wasn't sure what they were, okay? So, first up, first thing I want to look at is your back. The reason burpees can be bad for your back is because you are moving your back into a position called spinal flexion whereby you're bent over like this. Now this in itself is not a bad position to be in. However, with the burpee, if you're moving into that position at speed with poor strength, stability, and the ability of your muscles to control the movement, then your risk factor for getting injury goes through the roof. The position that you're gonna end up in at the start is most people want to put the hand on the ground as quickly as possible because generally speaking, in gyms these days, Burpees are programmed for max reps, um, programmed for time or whatever, so you want to get as many reps in as possible. So as you come down into this position, you can see the position my back ends up in. So if I can't squat low enough, and even if I can, in order to get my hands on the ground, my back will end up with a big curve in the spine. And again, I will repeat, that in itself is not a bad position. Your spine is designed to move but generally it's designed to move under control. It's when you lose control um, and momentum plays a part that your risk of injury goes up. So 
this kind of flexion at speed with a total lack of control, especially in the muscles in your back, controlling that movement down into this position. It's easy for these muscles to let go and just literally to collapse, but these guys have to lengthen and you drop into that position quite quick. Again, what this does with your spine, because you have your, um, your vertebrae and your, your spinal discs, you're constantly squeezing the discs at the front. And if you consistently do it over time, like a burpees are part of your daily routine, and you're constantly doing it fast, you're constantly doing it for high reps, then it can become an issue. Um, so movement variety is important, but in terms of your back, get going into this position really, really quick is probably not a good idea. It also becomes not a good idea when you get fatigued. So even if you have good core strength, at some point, if you're doing these for reps, um, if you're doing these for a high volume, um, long duration, then fatigue will play a part, like with any exercise. Um, however, this becomes an issue when your coach doesn't appreciate that as you get fatigued, your um, risk of injury increases massively, and especially in your back. And at a time when most people will have issues with their lower back or have poor core strength because of their ergonomics and work and because of their lack of physical fitness anyway, um, that's the first issue with your, with your back, okay? Next up, we'll look at your knees, okay? So when you are doing a burpee, what should happen according to um, Royal Huddleston is that you come down into a squat and you put your hands on the ground. Now in this position, right, you're in a good squat position, there's no major pressure on the knees. However, what you'll see most days is when people are doing burpees for speed, in order to get onto the ground real quick, they'll be up on the toes and they'll end up in this position here. You know, as you move down into that position there, right? if I hold this position here, the sheer force is on the knees, it's forcing the joint this way. That's where the pressure is on your joint. Sheer forces basically means that if you have two structures that can move like that, Okay, so you imagine this is your knee. As your knee opens up, the shear forces are forcing your um, femur, your thigh bone, that way. Okay, so if you can imagine that, as my knee is here, if I go up to my toes, it's forcing you that way. Okay, as opposed to when you do a normal squat with the feet fully flat on the floor, you sit back into it, the quads will take the pressure and not the joint itself. So the pressure on the knees can be absolutely huge. And most people, right, probably myself included, will struggle to get deeper into a squat than that without compromising their back or without putting a lot of pressure on their knees with that, with those excess shear forces. So we've looked at your back and we've looked at your knees. Uh, next up, your core, I have mentioned it already. If you have poor core strength and poor core stability, then doing this movement quickly while fatigued is a recipe for injury. So. Again, I, and again, I've said it two or three times, and I know I'm repeating myself, but I want to make this point. Being in this position for your spine is not inherently bad. It only becomes bad when the muscles here become fatigued, the muscles around your core get fatigued, and they can't properly support the structures, like your ligaments, like your tendons, like your spinal discs, as you move into that movement for a long duration. Next up is press-ups, right? So we've looked at your back, as you drop down into this position, your knees, if you're constantly up on the toes like this, getting ready for the jump back, which is the next part of it, okay? So when you jump back, the whole idea is that you would do a press up and then come back up. So you, you start off again, so you'll come down into this position, hands down, jump back, now you should be doing a press up. Already, my hands are too narrow in that position to do a really good press up, right? The emphasis is too much on the triceps, not enough on the chest, and I'd be telling people, coaching them to have their hands a little bit wider. So as you come down, again, if you are not strong enough to do a press up, then chances are you're not strong enough to do a burpee effectively or safely, because you should be dropping to the ground in a straight line, straight back up, then you jump in and you jump. However, what usually happens is that someone will drop to the ground, bad spinal position, They'll do this and they'll roll onto the ground. Then what they'll do is they'll come up like this, push through the knees, jump in and come back up. So technically speaking, you're not doing a press up, okay? You are doing more like a worm, right? I'm not even gonna attempt to do it because I'll break my nose off the ground. But when you're in that 
extended position like that again if you have any issues with your lower back you're coming up into this position here and then you're jumping up into the air okay so if you cannot effectively do a press up straight down and straight back up for at least 10 12 15 reps then chances are doing a burpee at speed is not a good idea for you next up the time right and i want to make sure i get this right initially when this test was brought out um it was done for 20 seconds maximum and it was done fast okay the reason they did that was they measured heart rate before they measured heart rate afterwards um, and anyone that knows if you do burpees flat out for 20 seconds your heart rate is going to go from here to about here very very quickly and that's what burpees should be an anaerobic or high intensity exercise and high intensity exercises should only be done for a short amount of time with a large amount of time to recover so that they can be done effectively and safely and not under fatigue that's the most important thing but modern day they're being done in their hundreds and i've seen it now more so that we've gone into lockdown or quarantine or whatever you want to call it that there's challenges being put out there's people doing 200 300 a day there's um fundraisers doing three thousand a month and all that and look i'm not taking away from the people's um emphasis of, of raising money for charity that's not what i'm at there but that's not the purpose of burpees okay they are not a high um sorry they are not a long duration um high intensity exercise it should be a long a short duration high intensity exercise 20 seconds max but even at that for the reasons that i'm saying i would advise people to not do them at all they are there are much better alternatives if you want to break the burpee down you can do squats okay safe effective exercise that you can do for reps with a certain amount of weight or no weight at all and you're going to get a, a very 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 good training effect on the muscles in your legs the next part right that jump back in you can safely do squat thrusts or mountain climbers whatever you call them you could do those then you can do press-ups okay you can break the burpee down into its parts and you can do those exercises very very safely and um, without worrying about putting your back at risk putting your uh, knees at risk and having a, a level of injury risk that I would deem as unacceptable as a coach um, last but not least I want to I hope that anyone that has watched this video and um, takes a little something from it and whether you're a coach that really really um, backs burpees and constantly puts them in the program um, I hope it just gives you something to think about I'm not saying you have to stop I am saying have a think about it if you are a client or someone that goes to a gym or has burpees as part of your program I um, I seriously hope that you may reconsider or have a conversation with your coach I am um, saying that hey I watched this video and this guy makes sense if you totally disagree with what I said, again, I would love you to comment on the video or send me an email at markhoffycoaching at gmail.com and respectfully tell me what you might agree or disagree with and I'd be happy to have a conversation with you. This is not to piss people off. This is to provide information to um, anyone that is willing to listen and hopefully you take something from it. Um, so I'm off now to do um, a thousand burpee challenge. Damn it. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, damn it, why did I agree to do that challenge? Damn it.